Here we're going to start more deeply looking at infinite series, starting with a few pretty simple results that will help us build more important and like more famous results. And so before we do that, I just want to recall something. So we say that an infinite series, and we rewrite that as the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n, converges to a. And often we would just write that this sum equals a in this case. If the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub m equals a, where s sub m is the mth partial sum. And what I mean by that is f s sub m is a1 plus a2 all the way up to a m. Or we could write that in summation notation as the sum as n goes from 1 to m of a n. So our first result will be this one that is like an algebraic property of infinite series. And that says that if we have two convergent series, so the series A sub n converges to A, and the series of terms B sub n converges to capital B, and then C is a real number, then the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of C times A sub n. So that's a new series where all of its terms are just scalar multiples of the terms from this series a sub n. So that's equal to c times a. So this is some sort of infinite distributive rule. So notice we, in essence, factored this c out of this infinite sum. And then next we have the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n plus b sub n equals a plus b. So that's some sort of like infinite associativity rule. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and get to these proofs. And they will hinge on this definition down here of the convergence of these series as the convergence of the sequence of partial sums and some algebraic properties of partial sums that we've already proven in previous videos. Okay, so maybe we'll do this one first. So let's go ahead and set S sub M equal to A1 plus A2 all the way up to a m. So in other words, it's the sum as n goes from 1 to m of a sub m. And we know, given the fact that the sum of a sub n is equal to a, we know that the limit of this sequence of partial sums is equal to a. Great. But now, notice if we set t sub m equal to c times a1 plus c times a2 all the way up to c times a m, we can use the fact that we have a finite distributive rule just from arithmetic to factor the c out of the right hand side. We get c times a1 plus all the way up to a m. But notice that is equal to c times sm, where that's the partial sum that we had before. But now if we go ahead and take the limit as, t, as m goes to infinity of t sub m, that's going to be the same thing as the limit as m goes to infinity of c times s sub m. But from our video on algebraic properties of limits, we know that we can factor that c out of the limit given the fact that sm converges to a like we had written right here. That should be an s. We have this is equal to c times the limit as m approaches infinity of s sub m, but that's going to be c times a. But now using this definition of t sub m and this value of the limit of t sub m, we see that those to imply that the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of c times a sub n equals c times a, which is exactly what was desired by this first green box. Okay, so now maybe we'll erase this and do the second green box. So now let's prove the result in the second green box, and I'm going to reuse some notation here, like I'll reuse s sub m and I will reuse T sub M naming it something else. Um, but that should be okay because now we're proving a slightly different result here. So let's go ahead and set uh, S sub M equal to A1 plus up to AM. And just like we had before, the limit as M approaches infinity of S sub M equals A. And then furthermore, we'll set T sub M equal to B1 plus up to BM. 
And now notice that tells us that the limit as m goes to infinity of t sub m equals b by our assumption up here. Now what we want to do is maybe we'll set x sub n equal to s sub m plus t sub m. But notice that's going to be exactly equal to a1 plus b1 plus a2 plus b2 plus all the way up to am plus bm. And we're able to do that because we definitely have associativity in a um, finite sum. That's just kind of the rules of arithmetic here. Now what we want to do is notice that the limit as m goes to infinity of x sub m equals the limit as m approaches infinity of s sub m plus t sub m. But then again, by our algebraic properties of limits of sequences, we know that we can break that apart because each of those are convergent by our assumption. So here we have the limit as m goes to infinity of s sub m plus the limit as m goes to infinity of t sub m. Good, but that gives us A plus B because those are the limits of each of those sequences of partial sums like we had said before. But now if we look at the way that X sub M is defined, it is the partial sum of this left-hand side over here. And we also just proved that the limit of these partial sums equals A plus B. So putting these two facts together, we see that the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n plus b sub n equals a plus b, which is exactly what we wanted to show in the second green box. All right, I'll clean this up, and then we're going to prove one more result. Now we're going to prove something called the Cauchy criterion for series. So I just did a video on Cauchy sequences. I'll let you guys look at that if you need some recollection. So here we're going to prove that the series a sub n converges if and only if for all epsilon bigger than zero, there is a natural number capital N such that if little m and little n are bigger than or equal to capital N, then the sum of the terms a m plus one up to a m plus n, and those are in absolute values, is less than epsilon. So notice here we've got n terms that we're adding together and those n terms start at the m plus first term. So that's kind of the thing that's going on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the forward direction proof first. In other words, we're going to assume that this thing converges. So let's suppose that the sum as n goes from one to infinity of a sub n converges. So by using our definition for the convergence of a series, that means its sequence of partial sums converges. So in other words, we know that if we set SM equal to A1 plus up to AM, then the sequence SM as M goes from one to infinity also converges. Great. But now we know a convergent sequence of real numbers is equivalent to a Cauchy sequence of real numbers. So if this sequence of partial sums converges, then it is Cauchy. So let's go ahead and write that down. So the sequence SM as M goes from one to infinity is Cauchy. Now that we've got this set up, we can go ahead and start with an arbitrary epsilon and then continue on. So let's say that we are given epsilon bigger than zero. Let's find some capital N, which is a natural number, such that if M and N are bigger than or equal to capital N, we have the absolute value of SN minus SM. And I should go ahead and point out here that I'm using my kind of standard ordering on M and N. I'm taking M to be less than or equal to N. I can always make that assumption. So we've got absolute value of SN minus SM is less than epsilon. And all of this came into existence because the sequence of partial sums was Cauchy. Okay, great. Now the next thing that I want to do is expand this left-hand side of the inequality 
but it's not too hard to see given this definition right here that the left hand side of this inequality will expand exactly to what we want it to. In other words, we've got this absolute value of an plus one all the way up to an is less than epsilon. And just to reiterate, here what I'm underlining in green, those two are equal to each other. And we know that this first one um, holds, in other words, this first inequality holds because of the cauchiness of our sequence of partial sums, and this second one was our goal. Okay, good. So now we've proven the forward direction. Now let's go ahead and clean this up and we'll prove the reverse direction. Now we're ready to do the reverse direction. And this is actually gonna be pretty quick and a little bit hand wavy, but I think the argument is clear. So the first thing that we'll do is set S sub M equal to this partial sum A1 up to AM and let epsilon be bigger than zero. Now what we wanna do is find some sort of capital N, which is a natural number, where, where if little m and little n are bigger than or equal to capital N, we have the absolute value of a m plus one all the way up to a n is less than epsilon. Great. But now what we wanna do is notice that this left-hand side of the inequality is exactly equal to our nth partial sum minus our mth partial sum. Great. So in other words, we have the nth partial sum minus the mth partial sum is less than epsilon, which tells us that S sub m as a sequence is Cauchy but a sequence being Cauchy is equivalent to it converging, at least in the real numbers it is. And that means that this sequence of partial sums converges, but that's exactly what we need for this sum of a n terms to converge. So let's go ahead and write that down. So the sum a n converges, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, I'll go ahead and clean this up and then we'll look at a quick corollary. So now we're gonna do a quick corollary to this theorem and it is, so now we're gonna do a quick corollary to this theorem. So it says that if the series A sub N converges, then the limit of the terms must be equal to zero. So sometimes this is presented in a calculus two class via its converse and it's called the test for divergence. So the converse would say, if the limit of the terms is not equal to zero, then this thing diverges. So that's useful to know as well. So we'll do all of the steps of the proof of this, but it's fairly simple and you can really wave your hands at it just as nicely. So let's go ahead and see what we've got. So let's suppose that epsilon is bigger than zero and that is chosen arbitrarily. Since our goal is to show that the limit of this a sub n term goes to zero, what we want is the absolute value of a sub n to be less than epsilon for n kind of large enough. But this setup up here is what we have as a tool. So let's go ahead and use this tool and find some capital N, which is a natural number, such that for all m and n, which are bigger than or equal to capital N, we have the absolute value of a m plus one all the way up to a m plus n is less than epsilon. Now the important thing to notice here is that this is true for all m and n bigger than this capital N. So now what we wanna do is pick a special value of n. So the one that I wanna take is n equals m plus one. So after taking n equals m plus one, notice this left-hand side of the inequality is gonna collapse to just the absolute value of a sub n, and then we have that is less than epsilon. But this tells us that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals zero because in fact, that's exactly what we'd wanna show in order to prove that limit. Okay, that's a good place to stop.